Hi, I'm Los Fogel Sharp. Today's May 23rd, 2020. And you haven't heard from me for a few days because I've been in a lot of prayer and just praying and seeking God and being quiet with the Lord. And he's been very, very quiet. Um, I went up on the hill yesterday with Gary later in the day and we sat there. And I always talk to him and pray. We pray together, Gary and I. And again, he was just really quiet. And I was like, what's going on, Father? I mean, I knew he was listening. But he was just really quiet. And I said to Gary, I said, he's watching. He's watching us down here to see what we're all doing. And he's just waiting for his people to get it and do what we're called to do. So he's just watching and waiting right now. The woe is here. We're still in the midst of the woe. And he's waiting to see what we're doing in our emotions, in our repentance. He's watching us. He waits. And then he stands up and he makes his moves and he allows things to happen. The tribulation time is a time when he's allowing it to happen because mankind has really slipped away from him. He's just trying to wake up as many as he can. So that's what's going on right now. And then he gave me just a short little word this morning just to explain where he's coming from. And at the end of this, Gary and I are going to put some um, pictures on of the things that are going on with the safe havens. You notice behind me, there's the there's an ark. So, Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus Yeshua, and I'm asking Father that we do wake up and we listen. We stop being so wrapped up in the world and all the things of the world, and we make our things our God, and we can't give this up and we can't give this away because it's ours. It belongs to us, and we're afraid to let go of things and money and gold and silver. We just feel that. Um, it belongs to us, our houses, our families. You know, the Bible tells us, you know, he who puts brother, sister, mother, father above the Lord is not worthy to be a follower of Jesus. He told the man in the Bible, he said, well, let me, let me bury my father just died. Let me bury my father. And Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. Come follow me. That's where life is. That sounds like a harsh thing to say, doesn't it? And yet, Jesus said it. God is serious. And we need to get it. Father, show us. We have to get this, Father. Help us to see clearly. Open our eyes and our ears, our hearts, our minds, our souls, so that we get this, the seriousness of the times we are in. And we ask in Jesus' name, and I rebuke the coronavirus again in the name of Jesus, Yeshua. You know, uh, let me just throw this out there real quick, because it just came to me when I rebuked the coronavirus. Everybody's condemning everybody, okay? Well, the president, they made such a big deal out of this virus that all these people were going to die, and this and that, and this and that. And it didn't really happen the way they said it was going to happen. And everybody's coming against this one, and then they're coming against that one, and they didn't shut down things fast enough in certain places. It's just nothing but condemnation, constantly being thrown at everybody. Has anybody even thought of the fact that people have been praying against the virus and asking God to help us? Has anybody even thought that, gee, just maybe God heard us and pulled back and has not allowed this disease plague thing to excel the way it was going to happen? Nobody's even mentioned that. All they mentioned is, well, this is what they said was going to happen, and it didn't. Well, praise the Lord it didn't. We're so quick to snap and condemn each other. Do we even get it yet? That just maybe God heard our plea. And the virus didn't take off the way it was meant to happen because that was Satan's plan. To kill a lot of people, which he did kill a lot of people. Nobody's even thought of saying that. 
Gee, we thank the Lord God for helping us. Gee, we thank the Lord God that our president stood in front of the entire, entire world and asked God to come in and help us. This is where we air. And this is where we're so messed up down here. Because all we can think to do is condemn, 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 condemn. And how many of you are condemning too? Well, they locked us in our houses and they did this and they did that. They did it to protect us from a virus that was deadly. All ages died with this virus. So they weren't taking a chance for anybody to die. They were trying to protect us. Yeah, did it crash the whole system? Did it crash the whole world? Absolutely did. But guess what? That was meant to happen too. Because God is looking for us to look at him. Not the things of the world. He's our supplier. He's the one that provides. He's the one that tells us what we need to do when famine's coming, which he is telling us what to do, and are we listening to that? We have to start listening and stop pointing at everybody all the time and trying to blame somebody else when we're the ones that aren't even doing what we're supposed to be doing. How many of you are even involved in making these arcs of safety come to pass? Or are you expecting just to show up when the time is right and think you're just going to walk right in and a house will be provided for you? Everything's just going to be provided for you when you didn't do a thing. You didn't even send a dime to help it happen. You see, that's the way we think. We just expect everything to be handed to us in life. That's not how it works. It's called doing Faith without works is dead, the Bible tells us. It's dead. So if you do nothing with your so-called faith, what good is it? If you say you're a believer in the word of God and you never lay hands on the sick for them to recover, what's the sense? Why even have the faith in the first place if you're never going to use it in the kingdom? We're supposed to be using the faith, the gifts of the Holy Spirit in the kingdom of God on the earth. And are we doing any of it? Or are we just complaining about everything? Well, I'm sick of staying in my house. I'm sick of wearing these stupid masks. I'm sick of this. I'm sick of that. Yeah, does it get frustrating? Absolutely. Nobody wants to wear a stupid mask on their face. I don't like it either. But what are we doing about it? Are we rebuking the virus every day, like I've said, to do? And just maybe... The fact that we have been rebuking it, it didn't do what it was going to do. Instead of looking to blame somebody, well, they lied to us. They didn't tell us the truth. They saw what was happening with this virus. It was taken off like wildfire. Extremely contagious. That's where we do err. Because we don't look at things the way we should be through the eyes of the Father. Because God now is sitting back and he's watching us all. He's watching how we're acting. He's watching what we're doing during this woe. Are we loving one another? Are we in prayer and intercessory, intercessory prayer for, the, for the, uh, the world and for souls to be saved? Are we stepping into the picture to make these arcs of safety go up? We have a whole summer ahead of us that we can build. A whole entire summer is here for us. But we can't build a thing unless the money comes in to build it. Think about that for a minute. I have builders waiting, waiting to start building. It cost millions and millions and millions of dollars to build these places. Houses for everybody to live in. A sanctuary for us to come and praise the Lord in while we're waiting to be raptured out of here. You have to have wells 
cesspools put in. There are things you have to do to make it function. You have to have gardens growing food, animals to provide meat. It's a grave undertaking. And the stewards of the day are the ones that are called to do it. They're the ones, the funding comes in and then they put it out there the way it's needed to be put out there to make it come to pass. So is everybody doing their part in it? My part is to bring you the words of the Father. And are we even listening to that? Do you even believe it? I have a track record. You can't deny my track record. And what's recently happened, how God specifically said things, you can't deny it. I couldn't have been so specific with the square things. How would I know that? I would never know that. God is speaking, and I'll be listening. So he's been very, very quiet, and I know he's watching, and he's waiting to see what we're going to do. The gold and the silver right now have not risen where it can be actually used. That we have to wait for till the, the moment in time when it shoots up and we it can become a lot of money so that we can build things and do things. So that right now is in holding. So what we need right now is for people who have been blessed with money to step into the picture and take this on as a task, a mission for God. That's what God needs to happen at this moment. Until the gold and the silver actually take off and get to the point where we can then use that and make things come to pass with that. But see, there's a, you got to remember something. Our steps are divinely ordered, and there's a time and a season for everything. Right now, finances are still finances, and it, they're still, it's still being used. Cash is still being used right now, money. Gold and the silver can be used too, but the silver, the value of the silver is a joke right now. What are you going to do? Take a bunch of silver and get what? A few dollars for it? It's not going to build a bunch of houses. It's not with that value. Gold has more value. But the gold doesn't have nowhere near the value that it's going to have either. So why take, you know, a few gold coins that can build you maybe half a house? If you have enough of them. You have to have enough of them. You wait till it shoots up. So you have to have wisdom in using the finances. It's the cash money that we use to buy the land. It's the cash money that we use to get the dome. It's the cash money that we use to build the buildings and the road that's going up. It's the cash money coming in that's doing that. And that's all of the, you that have been obedient to the calling to do this. So it all depends on what we do on our part. It's like, are we going to go out and vote? Trump needs to get voted in again. And are we going to do it? This is the man that can bring the finances back. This is the man that has enough guts to pull the gold and the silver in. If that's what's necessary for it to shoot up or whatever's going to happen to help balance the economic crash that's here. This is a depression for real. The food supplies meat. You can't even get meat in my area. There's just things that are just missing off the shelves. And of course, then you go in and you're only allowed to buy one piece of meat. It's only one piece of meat now we can buy in our area. And vegetables and stuff like that is four cans they allow you. That's it. So you can't even stock up anymore. Time to stock up was before. When, in that way, anyway. So we have to have wisdom of the timing of things and how critical things are and how close we are. And that's what makes it come to pass when we follow the leading of the Spirit. So I'm here today to tell you what God wants me to tell you. So let me now read you what he said to me this morning. Because what he says is what counts. What I say means nothing unless I'm being led by the Spirit, which I am. <laughs> so we have to be aware of that too. We have to be aware of those who are actually listening to the Holy Spirit and the leading of the Father. And when I, you don't hear me for a few days, it's usually because I'm being moved to go and sit before God in, in prayer and just 
waiting to hear, waiting to get moved, waiting to know what's going to happen so that I know what I can tell you and what we all need to do as the bride of Jesus. So let's listen to what he said. It's very short and to the point. I am watching and waiting. I'm watching to see if repentance is taking place. I'm waiting for my people to stand up and do what they are called to do. It's time to build the arcs, and what are you waiting for? I have shown you plainly what is going on in the earth. What more confirmation do you need to take seriously the call to get the arcs finished before the famine comes? Who is listening? Only those with ears to hear. And where will you be when the earth is looking for food as the weather and the beasts destroy the land? No more time to think about it. The time is at hand to start building, and that takes my entire bride to accomplish this. No more time to sleep, my beautiful. Time to rise up and gather together all you have and finish the ox. Time is of the essence, and these places are gifts for you, so you can live in peace while my indignation continues to pour down on the inhabitants of the earth. I love you, and I ask you to listen to your father. He is speaking. Who among you has the means to help in this arc task? Questions. And you, my love, have the answers. Love your father who art in heaven. That's what I got. Now with that, I'm going to bring you to the scripture that backs the arcs of safety up. And let me just say one more time, when I read this to you, this is not the rapture. And I'll tell you why it's not the rapture. Because God is telling his people to do something. In the rapture, we just get caught up. In the twinkling of an eye, we get changed. Boom, like that. All we have to do with that is to follow Jesus and do the right thing in life. So there's nothing we, have, we are called to do. He's telling us specifically in this scripture, and it's Isaiah 26, I've said it many times over, what we need to do. And this is what he says. Isaiah 26, 20. Come, my people. That's you, if you're a believer in Jesus. Enter thou into thy chambers. He's telling you to do something. He's telling you as people to make a move and go into his chambers. And shut thy doors about thee. In other words, go into the chambers and close the door. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. That means there's indignation coming. And it's going to come on the earth. For behold, the Lord comes out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth. Who's he going to punish? The inhabitants of the earth. That's people. For their iniquity. For their sins. The earth shall also disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. In other words, the earth is disclosing all the blood that was shed. The aborted babies, the martyrs, the murdering of God's people. That's the shedding of blood on the land. It's going to disclose it. In other words, it's going to reveal it. So what does that mean? That means the earth is acting out because of all the murdering and the aborted babies and all the sinfulness of everything. And it's cracking and earthquakes and there's pressure mounting up because of it. Because it's not covering it anymore. It's going to reveal itself. The earth is going to reveal all her sin that mankind has been dumping on it for generations and generations and generations. This is the time frame. And the Lord comes out from his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth. That's what he's doing. Then if you keep going down to chapter 27, in that day, with the Lord with his sore and great and strong sword shall punish Leviathan, the piercing serpent. Even Leviathan, that crooked serpent, and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. 
in that they sing ye unto her a vineyard of red wine. I, the Lord, do keep it. I will water it every moment, lest any hurt it. I will keep it night and day. He's talking about his vineyard, his people. He's going to protect it and keep it and water it and make sure it's taken care of. If you go back even to in chapter 26, go back to verse 9. For when thy judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. When his judgments are on the earth, all the inhabitants are going to learn righteousness, whether they like it or not. Because that's what God's going to do. He's going to come and he's going to take care of it all. Go up to verse 3. That will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusts in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. For he brings down them that dwell on high, the lofty city. He lays it low. He lays it low. It says it twice. Even to the ground, he bringeth it even to the dust. Well, what did he just recently say about Los Angeles, San Francisco? He said they're going to be no more. That's what that means. That's what that's talking about. Cities that are living in sin and they think who they are. He's going to bring them down to dust, to the ground. If you want to go and read it, go read the whole thing. 26, 27. He's speaking to us from his word. And all the way back when Isaiah wrote that stuff, it was for the end times. So the cities of sin are going to be destroyed and leveled, just like Sodom and Gomorrah was. God is not tolerating abominations. He allows it for a season, and then he deals with it. And don't be like the five virgins who were not ready. The other five were ready. And what happened? The five virgins that were not ready came to the five that were ready and said, please, give us some of your oil. And the five virgins that were ready, what did they tell them? Go get your own oil. Because when the trumpet blows, we want to be ready. So if we give you our oil, we won't have enough to light our lamps and have our lamps lit so that we can go into the wedding feast. And what happened? The five went into the world to get the oil. Meanwhile, the trump blew. The other virgins went in. And they got left out. And when they came, and they said, hey, 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 what about us? What was the response? I never knew you. You workers of iniquity. Lord, did we not prophesy in thy name? Did we not cast out demons in thy name? Did we not do these things in thy name, Lord? And Jesus said, Hmm, I never knew you. Because you were workers of iniquity. That's the people that say they're Christians. And they live like the devil. And we see plenty of them out there, don't we? They're in the Congress. They're all over the place. So they're like the ones that weren't ready. They didn't open their eyes and their ears to hear the truth. They were more wrapped up in themselves and their own lives and what they wanted to do. They were too busy to be prepared for the things God's telling us to prepare for. Do not be like the five virgins. Everybody needs to be involved in the mission that God has given us all to do. Because they're going up everywhere. Anywhere there's a rural area that's not near 
a coast or earthquake zone. You can't be near the, near the coastlines because tsunamis are going to hit. Don't be in major earthquake zones or volcanic areas because they're going to go off. There are safe zones where these places will go up. And God's protection will be there for all of us. And I'm not the only one, Gary and I are not the only ones building a place. But ours is 115 acres we have, and we have another 40 acres we could buy if we want to. But I didn't focus on the other 40 acres at the time because he was asking a little too much money, and I figured, well, let me get the 115 and start building on that. Because what good is having all this acreage if you can't build anything on it? It means nothing either, right? So you try to use wisdom. I made sure I got the land that had the springs. We just found another spring. We're going to put it at the end of this, the picture of the running spring. Gary and I just found it in one of the woods we went walking through the other day. We've been walking on the property to see the bar where the barriers are, you know, the land zone areas and where we can build and where we're going to put up the little cabins and the church. So we've been doing our purpose to do that. But the task is for all of us, not just me and Gary. We're only two people. We have those involved. We have a core group now of people that are involved in the workings of it all. They're definitely coming here. People are starting to te definitely tell me they feel moved to come here. So I'm starting to talk with people to get that organized. But we have to be part of this. And you don't have to come here to be part of helping either. Just do what the Spirit tells us to do. That's the bottom line. You know, I'm not looking for a thing. <laughs> I live my life every day serving God. And he takes care of me and Gary. I don't need material things. I don't need to have a house that's in my name. I don't need any of it. I own nothing. Neither does Gary. Because I don't have to. Now, that doesn't mean you shouldn't have a car or a house. I'm not telling you that. The point is, don't make it an idol. If God was to tell you to go give your car away to somebody today, what would you do? Think about it for a minute. What if God told you, listen, I want you to sell your house and go go uh, give it to the poor. All, of, all your money. <laughs> what would you do? That's what he told them in the Bible. The rich man came and said, Lord, what must I do to enter into the kingdom? And Jesus said, well, go sell all you have and give it to the, the needy. The guy was like, are you serious? Turned around and walked away. Couldn't do it. The bride of Jesus does that stuff all the time. Because you know why? Because it's the kingdom of God and our love for Jesus and nothing else really matters. Because you don't look at things as if they're yours. You look at things as if God's letting you use them for the time frame that you need them. The same with my family. They belong to Jesus. And I was their mother and I taught them correctly. And I'll always be their mother and always give them guidance whenever I can. But the point is, they really belong to God. You belong to God. You don't belong to me. I'm just here to tell you what he tells me to tell you. And I have to be obedient in that. You belong to God. Therefore, he's the one you have to obey. And you have to recognize who's the true prophets that are speaking from God so that you can follow the leading of the Spirit because a lot of you don't know what you're supposed to do. So, I love you. Gary loves you. And we will be back when he sends me back again. And when he tells me to go live, I will go live. I was praying about it, and the reason I didn't go live was because God is sitting very quiet right now, watching and waiting, and I wasn't meant to go live during that time, because he's watching to see what his people are doing and how serious they are in the times we're in, and do they really get it, what's happening? So the only reason I'm even doing this today was because he told me to do this. And he only said a short thing. 
because again, he's sitting and he's watching and he's waiting. So pray, pray, pray. And rebuke the virus, keep rebuking evil, and fear not and trust God with your lives because he loves us. So I will be back when he sends me back again and have a blessed day.